praise is due to Allah, the most merciful, the affectionate. He placed in the hearts of people the love for the righteous believers. I bear witness that there is no deity save Allah. Having no associates, I also bear witness that our master and prophet Muhammad is the servant of Allah and his messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, his family and companions, and all those who follow them in the righteousness till the day of judgment. There is no doubt that the love of Allah is a status for which the righteous compete, and it has signs and causes. It also returns with tremendous rewards to the believers. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, has said, If Allah loves a person, he calls Jibreel and saying, Allah loves so and so. O Jibreel, love him. Jibreel would then love him, and then Jibreel would make an announcement among the residents of the heaven. Allah loves so and so, and therefore you should love him also. So all the residents of the heavens would love him, and then he is granted the pleasure of the people of the earth. So people's love and acceptance of the person amongst them, amongst their community, is a sign that Allah the Almighty endorses upon his true believing servants, and part of their reward is in this world. So if Allah loves you, you will gain two things. One, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, Allah will call Jibreel and place around and Allah will say to Jibreel, I, I love my servant so and so and therefore you must love him as well. Jibreel would not object to this because he is an angel. Secondly, Allah will not throw one that he loves into the Jahannam. If Allah loves you, Jahannam will never touch you. Allah has said, Allah made wajib for upon himself that he will love everyone that loves another person for the sake of Allah. Prophet has said, There will be people on the day of resurrection. There will be people who are so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Anbiyas, the Nabis and the Shaheed will say to themselves, What did they, what did they do to deserve that status? They are that close to Allah. What did they, they do to deserve that status? The Messenger of Allah said, The people who loved one another only for the sake of Allah, without any blood ties, without any business transaction, just for the sake of Allah. It is important that each one of us be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that we are returning to Him. The one who is successful is he or she who is continuously praying, preparing for the day he or she is going to be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were created in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who made us so that when we return to him, we find a beautiful abode that we shall be dwelling forever and ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this clear. He states, I have not created mankind or jinkind except for the reason that they worship me. Every one of us wants to be protected from the evil, from the devil. Every one of us wants good health. We would love to have a good earning, to have to lead a comfortable life. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has mentioned how it is to earn the assistance of our own maker. If I want this help, what should I do? So he says, Allah continues to be in assistance of his worshippers for as long as that worshipper continues to be in assistance of his fellow brother or another. So we need to understand this very clearly. When I feel in my life that I need assistance, things are going wrong, my health is failing, my salary is not enough, or I don't have a job, or things are looking loose-ended, I feel very insecure, I feel like something is wrong. I need to ask myself, have I helped my fellow brother and sister? If I have not, how can I expect, ex expect the love of Allah? Each one of us should ask himself or herself, have we given out a small charity today before we came to this Friday prayer? Or do we have the intention of giving even a small charity as we depart from this masjid? So one might say, well, I don't have any money, then, then we should understand 
that a charitable deed is not only confined to monetary deeds. No, it can be by a smile, by a beautiful greeting, by helping someone cross the road, by being polite and being kind, by fulfilling the rights of others, by stroking the hand over the child who is an orphan, out of affection and care to show them that you care as well. You care, you show care for others so that Allah will show care for you. So if I want the help of Allah, I need to start helping others. I need to protect myself from selfishness because selfishness will chase away the help of Allah. When a person lives for himself or herself alone, he is at his own mercy. But when a person lives in a way that he wants to reach out to others, then his maker will reach out to him because he has reached out to those who have been created by the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is always room for improvement. The greatest revolution starts from myself to change myself. How when people see Muslims, do they feel that Muslims are different? Because when Allah speaks, you are the people who have been taken out for the benefit of the whole of humanity. The benefit of humanity. When they see the Muslims and when they see the Muslims around, they see something different around us. Or are we just uh, everybody? Are we just like everybody else? Because we are meant to be the people who are di- who are different. We are meant to be the people who are me- meant to make a change. We are meant to be the people like Sahabi and there were people, and uh, the Sahabis were the people that wherever they went, they made a difference. So uh, there was a story of a Sahaba who went to Hibs, a place in Syria. And he opened up a shop. So then there were the ethics and morals that come when it comes to business. So when he opened up a shop, one day a Christian came up to his shop. And the Christian asked him, I want some meat. And the Sahabi says to him, Across the road there is a shop of a Christian. I have been watching the shop throughout the day. And nobody has come to buy from his shop. Why don't you go and buy from his shop because I have had enough sales for today so that I can feed my children tonight. So this Christian goes to the the Christian shop and then after a while he comes back to the shop of the Sahaba. So the Sahaba asked him, then he said, Did you not find what you were looking for? Then the Christian said, No, no, I found what, what exactly I was looking for. But there is something else that I want. So then the Sahabi asked, so what else do you want? So then he said, I want this Iman, I want this belief that you have. And the Sahabi who said, do not hurry, do not hasten, because these are the things that you, not, that you do not hasten. Take your time with belief. And then the Christian man says, no, 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 I want this Iman, because I want this belief, because this is the, if this is the character, of a mere companion of the Prophet then what must have been the character of the Prophet himself? How must the Prophet be? Now this is a question for all of us. Are we an asset to this deen? Do our lives reflect the character of the Prophet? Or do we just turn, uh, do we turn people towards Islam? Or do we turn people away from Islam? That is a question everybody has to ask. We all know that we need to contribute positively towards our families and towards our society. And towards the communities we are living in. And also finally towards the country we are living in and the globe at large. So for this reason I would like to encourage myself first and yourselves to improve ourselves in the character and conduct. For indeed that is the most important of the elements for making ourselves better people. If we improve our character and conduct, naturally everybody around us will do the same. And we will be living in a society and a community that will be so long, warm and so loving and worth living in. But and if we are, but he said if we have our own attitudes and we are not prepared to improve ourselves and our character, the way the way we help the people, the way we talk to people, the way we behave within the society, 
and community, then we will probably be living in a society that is far from ideal. So I would like to conclude this speech by, by the sayings of Prophet uh, <laughs> Shall I inform you of the best morals of this world and the hereafter? They are to forgive he who oppresses you, to make a bond with he who sears from you, to be kind to whom he insults you, and to be to give those who deprive you. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shudhan la ilahi na astaghfirullahu wa alaikum.